Let's talk about the new Android QPR2 beta number two on Pixel devices as usual. Google has very cleverly hidden away a handful of somewhat interesting features. Today, we're gonna take a look at this thread from Michelle Rahman, who, if you are not following Michelle on Twitter or threads, you should definitely be doing so because they are always uh, posting some very, very interesting deep dives into updates like these. I'm not gonna go through everything in their deep dive. I'm just gonna kind of highlight a couple of things and deep dive into that deep dive. I will put a link to this thread in the description so you can go check them all out yourself. So the first one I wanna call out is private space. Now this is something that has popped up in some of these earlier QPR betas, but it's not been actually enabled. Of course, Michelle was able to dig in a little bit deeper and they say they can now confirm that what this is, is a settings page that will allow you to hide apps on your phone from other people. Now we've seen this on other OEMs uh, phones like Samsung. They have something very, very similar. If you've used it on Samsung, you probably know exactly what we're talking about here with this feature. It'll be at the bottom of your apps list. It is a private space. They're protected by a lock. Notifications from apps in the private space are hidden. I assume you can probably put individual files in there as well. At least I hope that you can because that's how that does work again on other OEMs. So you're gonna be using a screen lock, a fingerprint, a face unlock, something like that. And then you can access these apps and presumably these files. It's basically creating a new private user profile. And at that point, once you've signed in with it using your authentication, you can go to the Play Store and install applications and they are again, hidden away. The next one is something that is, I think, of great interest to users of devices like the Pixel Fold. App pairs, the ability to take two applications pair them together and then launch them both in split window with a single tap is again seeing further work being done with this QPR2 beta 2 and in fact they've actually been able to fully enable it now indicating this feature may be coming sooner than later. Here is a demo of the app pairs posted on Android Police by Michelle. So we're going to launch two different applications. At that point, you can go ahead and go into split screen, Chrome and threads there, and they're gonna tap, I believe, swipe up and hold, and then you can click on save app pair. There is your app pair. You can move it around like a regular icon, and whenever you click on it, it's going to open up both of those applications together. Again, this is going to be something that will be very, very useful for people using these tablet style devices. They've been working on this feature for a really, really long time. I don't know why it has taken this long, but it is possible that with the stable version of QPR2 probably released in the general vicinity of March of early next year, or even Android 15 later on in the year, could see the release of this feature finally. Now this is not actually part of this beta, but I wanted to kind of quickly mention it because anytime I talk about app pairs, floating windows get mentioned in the comments down below. And I just kind of wanted to maybe clear the air a bit on that as well. They are continuing to work on floating windows. However, what I've been told is that it's sort of linked and attached to their desktop mode overhaul that has also been going on for a really long time. And it seems as though they don't want to launch the floating window until perhaps that desktop mode is also ready to be launched as well. And that may push that further down the line. Personally, I think that this is quite silly. If you could get the floating window done now, you could launch that now and then continue working on the desktop mode. At the same time, I do get that a desktop mode needs the floating window. Like that's, that is, they are definitely very, very tightly linked in that way. That's the point of a desktop mode is that all apps can be floating window. So I get it, but surely they could find a way to get the floating window aspect out first. Maybe I'm just not understanding, but that is kind of where we are with that, at least from what I've been told. We also have a bit of an update on the ability to move the at a glance widget on the Pixel launchers. In QPR2 Beta 1, Michelle enabled a flag that allowed him to remove the widget entirely. Fantastic, that's an option we should have had for a long time. But now there's a flag that can be enabled that will actually allow you to move that widget around like a normal widget, even though this is not technically a widget in the strictest sense of the term, it is now able to be moved around and removed. This is again, buried in the beta, not enabled just yet. It's something that may arrive with a stable build again in early March. 
And lastly, I want to talk about how this uh, update, this beta affected the Pixel Fold. In my initial video describing this update, I talked about the fact that Google themselves said that a known issue which was persisting with this update was the bug affecting Pixel Fold users wherein you would be unlocked, you would open up your device, and the screen, rather than doing this, would just remain black for some time. And I thought, well, okay, they're just telling us we haven't fixed that issue. In the minutes after posting that, I started getting comments from people that were saying, I think this update fixed the black inner screen issue. I don't experience this issue anymore. I could scroll through these and lots of people are saying that it's fixed, but I'm also seeing people say that it's not fixed, but it seems like it's more saying yes than no. So I'm not really sure what to make about it. I left the beta, so I can't tell you from personal experience, but it seems as though it's something that for some people, it was resolved, and for some people it was not. What is the common denominator? You know, what is the variable there that's meaning it's fixed for some and not for others? I don't know, but it is something I felt like I should at least uh, pass on. So there you go, guys. Those are some of the biggest hidden features in the QPR2 beta number two release. Like I said, I'm going to drop a link to Michelle's thread in the description down below, so you can go check out all of them. There are quite a few more, just none that were super exciting to me. Maybe they'll be exciting to you, though, so go check that out for sure. Give him a follow as well, guys. I'll see you on the next one, and until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.